greetings from Centre Parks, by the way. That's uh, that's the background. I hope you're all well. This is just ridiculous, though, isn't it? Oh, are you fucking having me on? Are you joking me right now? That's how deep that. This is how far they reach. Let me smoke that for you, Siri Merchant, yeah? Let me smoke that for you, Ted Lasso Bowley, yeah? You think you can fool us? You're a long way from Starbucks, mate. Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Let's have it right. Let's have it right. Up the Chels, up the Minnows FC. Big up to every single one of you live and locked in. Hope everyone's doing well, winning in life. First and foremost, guys, I want you all a smash to pieces that like button. If you haven't already, let's get those likes astronomical. You know what I'm saying? Hit that subscribe button as well. We're literally, I think, if I'm not wrong, we are a cup, uh, less than a couple hundred away from the 10k so we're getting closer and closer to 10k on the minerals fc so make sure you do subscribe to the Thank channel you. if you're new in here and we've got the minerals fc ultras membership which is uh, in the description down below and pinned in the chat as is official minerals fc on rumble let's have it right we're gonna land some minerals on there no shadow banning no censorship no copyright just freedom of speech and pure minerals to land. So make sure you go and check the link, which is in the chat and down below in the description as well. And of course, it goes without saying, we got Eunice Talks Minerals. We got Man Knows Minerals as well. Their channels and their links are in the title, which is Trust the Protest. To have it right, Clown Leck out, Trust the Protest. So big up to... Eunice, big up to Goody. Respect to you, geezers. What are we saying? How are we doing? You know what I'm saying? How are we doing? As we were saying before the stream, man, it's been an eventful week and it's been a very, very embar embarrassing one for Clown Lake. And boy, it just shows, man, that the tide's turning. The mainstream media are now finding it hard to ignore. And I've not always been a fan of this particular journalist, but... I've got a big up Matt Law for writing that piece and actually bringing it to the forefront as well, just to remind them. Like, the mainstream media know. They know what's going on. So hopefully this is the start of, you know, some kind of something that is gonna, that's going to change things at the club. But I know for a fact Todd Bowley, um, Egbali, and, and the other waste man that's, that owns the club, they're seeing this and they are completely embarrassed by it. Because remember, people... These guys have got friends in high places. And one thing that billionaires do not like is their image played with. They are egomaniacs. So when all their mates are looking at this kind of stuff and saying, well, you bought Chelsea, the crown jewel of London, and look at what you're doing to the club. You've even got the fans that are calling you Clown Lake and it's gone mainstream. It's not looking good for you. So believe me, believe me, they are not liking this, but we cannot take our foot off the gas. Yeah, we can't take our foot off the gas. Let's keep on going. Yeah, like Johnny said, we are not the laughing stock. They are the laughing stock. And we've got to keep it that way. Facts. You couldn't have said that any better. I feel like I've got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. Um, no, nah, look, first and foremost, actually, first and foremost, before I actually add to that, I do want to say, right, um, notifications come through, finally. So um, it's looking like um, your if there was a shadow ban or whatever, that's now gone for now, I'm guessing, because no yeah. ease are on. So um, that's come through, which is good. Secondly, um, I do want to say, everything you've just said, Goonie, spot on. It's nice that um, Matt Law's come up with something to show the true and real story within the fan base, because I know there's still the skeptics out there. There's still some people that think that, you know, the way that the club's being run for now, it's not great, but it's fine. We'll, we'll run with it. We'll see what's going to happen. They're undermining what the actual feeling within the fan base is, especially the match-going fans. Those stickers were plastered all across the concourses at the bridge. You know, the CSTs had to come out and put out a flipping open letter, a 1,500-word letter. It, <laughs> the fan base are not happy, so we can't ignore what's going on. Um this has been broiling and cooking up for some time. And like Guni has said, rightfully so, we can't come off the gas. This is something that's now got to, you know, 
the club have two choices here. Either they actually want to cooperate and start sorting the club in the way that it needs to be sorted. And we're all on board with that because we want the best for the club. Or they don't, they ignore, and this keeps going. Pick one. Simple as that. So um, we'll see what happens. And their first response, which they tried to put out via Chris Jurasek, um, Miz calls him Jurassic Park, which is hilarious. But um, where he tried to come out with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there we are. Let's get an Oscar for that uh, that rendition. But with um, that letter that was put out by Chris Jurasek, it's funny because I, I mentioned that the initial letter from the CST was addressed to Bowley and Egbali, and not one of them responded. They sent no. out their CEO to go and write the letter for them. And he come out with the most ridiculous polit politician PR response that you could possibly get. And that's made them look worse. So his response has actually worsened it for them. So this is where Goonies right. Their image is in the bin. They got to start playing their cards right, and they got to start looking at the situation for what it is. If not, this is only going to get worse. So let's see what happens. And that that's a very good point. Um, the fact that the the the, the Chelsea Supports Trust addressed it to Siri Merchant and Meatloaf, and we get the CEO responding. The CEO that walked in in front of this supporter group and said, hey, guys, hope everyone's doing well. Um, hopefully we had the three points today in an FA Cup tie. Um, so, I mean, this is what we're dealing with. This Brilliant. is what's in, in charge of our football club, making decisions to raise season tickets by 20%, uh, coaches by, you know, 10%, whatever it is. Um Beverages, food, drink, and everything, food, all up. You know, everything's going up, even the women's team, tickets, yeah. memberships, because we need to increase revenue. Why? Why do you need to increase revenue? Uh, because to we're compete, with table, our, to compete with our rivals. Yeah, we're, we're going to compete with the likes of Real Madrid, aren't we, Siri Merchant? Of course we are. No, you, no, we're not. You're in the bin. It's a fagazi. It's a lie. Everything these guys say is a lie, which is why they haven't come out and responded. They've used their little yes man, CEO Jurassic or Jurassic Park, whichever way you want to go, bruv. Um, and let's have it right. We're rich in, we're, we're Sir Richard Attenborough, bruv. Yeah. Where we landed, we control, and we created the park, bruv. We're the Chels. Yeah. You're just in there having a little play around, bruv. Yeah. But we'll fucking get you out. It's not a problem. We'll get you out of there. Um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Didn't address the situation. Didn't address the points made. No. And it was powerful. You know, it was necessary. And what's interesting to me is the day after Matt Law lands the minerals and writes a full-blown article in the Telegraph about the stickers with Clown Lake out, basically. Well, Clown Lake, the Three Ring Circus, get them out. We want our Chels back. All right. That, to me, the way I'm looking at the timeline, social media, the way everything's being spoke about on TalkSport and many large platforms, that has more impact than the actual letter that was sent out. Yeah. Yeah. And what I will say is both of them together make it even bigger. Within 24 hours, both Within of them together. Within 24 hours. Yeah. And, and I think yeah. at the end of the day, this is the right way to go. We are full within our rights. We're going to mud that Joe 90, yeah, reincarnated Simon Jordan, bruv. Let's have it right. We're going to, we're going to mud him like I did last night. Um, but the very pro ownership, as you, as you know, what he's about, he's an ex owner, failed owner of a mid table club. And all of a sudden, he's a he's an expert on running elite football clubs and backing clowns that make mistakes and propping. Oh, we've spent one billion. Why are they crying? Well, we're crying because the one billion is poorly spent. All right, and it's spent based on AI scouting used by MLS and Burnley. That's why we're crying. That's why we're moaning. And we've got every right to protest because right now, guys, 
this is a protest right yep. now. Yep. Yep. We we are actually living the protest. And the, 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 the Chill Supports Trust has said it's going to get toxic. We're going to protest. So give us answers. They come back with that. Yeah. Because they don't care, bruv. They this don't the give thing. a toss. This is the thing. This is the one point that I want to elaborate on to try and send out to those that critique this, right? And this approach of why these protests are happening in the first place. When you get that sort of response, what else do you expect? You know what I mean? The ones that are saying the stick is completely unnecessary, it's childish, it's stupid. Are oh, the fans, those fans, some fans need to calm down. Um, you know, this is going to take time. Well, yeah, understandably, it is going to take time. Something to believe in, you know? And when we do reach out for answers, don't come up with a, poli a, a not even a political, a politician type statement. Right, which is completely diverting from what the attention actually needs to be, you know, on. So these these guys are not sending out any sort of signal, even a signal to believe in, you know, or to think, you know, what we can run with that. We can we can talk about something. They're not doing it. It just screams. What does that scream? As you said, they don't care. Arrogance. Exactly. It's, it's a massive insult of our intelligence as well. They just think, oh, let's just pacify them. At least we've responded. And do you know the thing is, right? The response didn't even have to be as long as it did. All they could have said was, okay, acknowledge. We are going to arrange a meeting with... with, with, with. That, that was it. Exactly. That's all that needed to be said. We'll have a face-to-face -face yep. meeting um, with, with, with the group. Sorry, the names left my head completely, people. I'm sorry. Um, the Chelsea... CFC. Yeah, 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 sorry, bruv. It's yeah. so... We'll have a meeting with them and we'll discuss whatever concerns. That's all that needed to be said, not even a paragraph. But all of that waffle, just to pacify the fans, it just makes things even worse. But exactly. the thing is, good thing that we're here, we're not having it. We're, we're not having it. They Whatever they're going to throw to us, we're going to throw it right back at them. It's unacceptable. It's, it's, too, it's too far gone. And do you know what they're playing on? I know what they're playing on because I know these lot like Clockwork Orange, mate, yeah, in that dentist chair. I know exactly what they're about. They are they are relying on and they think in their deluded minds, because they are, they're, they're clowns, that we beat Man City and we go to the final, that we can get a string of results because it's a yeah. results game and that that's going to turn the tide against what's happening now with the, the proper Chels putting forward a protest in their faces. Yeah. The reality is... No matter what you do, whether you win an FA Cup or not, it doesn't change what is behind the scenes. It doesn't change what we all know is right in front of us, that everyone's woken up to. So irrespective of that, it's not going to save them. I know this. The, the, the support's had enough. It's clear as day what's happening at our football club. We're mid-table. For a second season, and they're going, and there's all these wrong uns. Let's name and shame them, bruv. Um, did that con, did that con, I want to ask, did he? Because I don't follow that. Yeah. Does, did oh, he, I don't did follow him either. Did he retweet Matt, Matt Law's tweet, or what did he say on the, the stickers? Did he say anything? I have no idea. I actually have no idea. All right. I've not checked. <laughs> Someone in the know. chat, let us know, because clearly we're on it. We don't follow. You know, tap, nah. tap one. Ever, right? ever since he started saying in his spaces, we love you, Todd Bowley. Todd Bowley's but nah, sorry. You, yeah, you get in the bin. Well, Vincey, hello, mate. Biggest tapped up account. Felix the cat. Oh, it's Poch out, crying like Poch out, crying for spilt milk. You wrong un, yeah? You little tapped up merchant. ITK wannabe, yeah? Let's have it right. These guys, you got Tom Overs and all these platforms going, oh, it's disgusting, these stickers, we're on a good run. We're, you know, we're starting to play well. We're, we're, gonna, we're only going to get better. No, we ain't. No, we ain't. Yeah? Stop kidding. Try, stop fooling people that follow you because you're lying to them. Like yeah. you've been lying all this time about trust the process. We're not a trust the process club. We're trust winning trophies. We trust the trophies, exactly. Exactly. 
we have standards and none none of this and all this that clown lake have implemented is going to lower my standards your standards and all the minerals of sea ultra standards and all the chelsea you know yeah. what i'm saying the chelsea that go home away we can't even say europe no more because we're in europe how embarrassing is that one billion back to spent back. back to two back second season now and we're not in mm -hmm. europe it's heading there oh but this is the thing no can't say anything yet because apparently there's a chance we're, we're, we we can still get Europe. We're going to win the FA Cup and things are going to be okay. Yeah. And we're going to beat Man City and Man United. More than likely, they're going to get to the final. Did, does everyone remember when we played Man United at Old Trafford? One of the worst performances that where United were in the gutter. They were in the gutter at that point. Injuries yep. galore. Plain rubbish. Yeah. So poor, and they played like prime Barcelona. You had the fraudulent Andrew Tate in there, all right. You had Scott McSauce, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> balling out, and Looney Tunes Fernandez, bro. Yeah, it's a joke, it's an absolute joke. No, it is, it is, and this is this is where you have to differentiate. This is where I think we're on the same page. And there's others that look and go and don't get it. They don't get it because they believe that what's happening at Chelsea is a footballing problem. Yeah. yeah. It's pot, it's the manager, it's tactics, it's this player out of position. It, that, that's it. The problems are confined to that. Sort that out and we're going to be balling. <sighs> Rude awakening. Rude awakening. It's not. It goes beyond that. The problems are not there. It's... It's a byproduct of the problem, yes. The fact that Pochettino makes the mistakes that he does, yes, that's a byproduct of the problem. The fact that we play players out of position or we have Poch dictating what he's dictating is a byproduct of that. The players that we have available, that we've chosen, that we've bought and we've spent on, that's a byproduct of the problem. Awesome. The way that Chelsea's being run as a football club inside, within, from within, forget the football pitch, from within as an organisation is a shambles. Exactly, and that's come. That's come from inside. Even people that are working there saying this is a mess. This is a mess. It's nothing like how it was before. There are people that go to work now at Chelsea from various departments that are having to do much more beyond their role because the structure's not in place, and there's nothing being done to actually try and help. People are exhausted. People are not happy. They're not content. This is where the fabric of success all begins. It begins in the organization. If you ain't got that sorted, forget the pitch. That's not getting anywhere. Yeah. And on top of that, the lack of trust, the lack of direction. Fans are worried that, rightfully so, we've complained time and time again, and we've seen time example after example as to why they are only focusing on trying to generate money, revenue, that's it. Forget the trophies, forget the success. We just need to try and benefit on profit only, and that's it. Yeah. Time and time again, we've been led and shown example to see that's the direction we're going in. Of course, fans are going to be worried. They're not just going to sit back and say nothing. You know, there's nothing to trust in. So this is why there's a there's I think there's a there's a divide in the fan base because you get people that are looking at this from a footballing perspective only, and they believe the club's fine. And that's not the reality. Clubs, clubs ruined from within. Ruined. Hundred percent. They only see the tip of the iceberg, mate. They don't see the part that's submerged underneath the water. And it's, and it's in tatters. And and the, and the funny thing is, what they've done for the last 18 months, well, ticking on now, close to two years, to have it right, they have literally used the PR to manipulate the supporters, to feed this process, to feed this vision that they don't even know what it is. If you ask all these guys at Toxic Positivity... They won't be able to tell you what the project is. They won't be able to tell you what where we're going. You know what I'm saying? But what does it need? It needs time. They have bought time up to this point. The time's run out. As I always said, it will be a matter of time. Yeah. That time will run out. The brown envelopes will run out. The journos will run out. And they won't be able to push what you want to push because the results don't lie and the condition of the team doesn't lie and the structure doesn't lie. And, and that's where we are now, where the supporters have are Chelsea through and through. They know how Chelsea was. They know how what the standards should be and what we're used to in the terms of being, you know, 
having a similar model to Real Madrid and, and Bayern Munich and a higher and fire mentality and, you know, win or get binned. You know what I'm saying? That's all gone now. It's all of a sudden we're Arsenal. You know, it's Lego NFC. Trust the process. Well, where has their process going? Because they still haven't won anything. And Lego is coming into phase five, spending 600 million. I, I'm not. I'm not having. I'm not having that. I'm not waiting five, six years. You think well, our club's going to be in, in a year's time? Champions League football. They actually said, and people forget, they came out in the media and they outright said, using Fabrizio and all these guys, all right, these frauds, to say <laughs> we need another two transfer windows to get Champions League football. Hold yeah. on a minute. We were in the Champions League when you bought our club comfortably. And all of a sudden, we need another two transfer windows on top of the three transfer windows that you've had to get just Champions League. That turns you into phase four, which means phase five, you're playing Champions League football without you even knowing if you're going to be able to win it or not. Now, that's not a very healthy project to me. That doesn't fill me with any confidence. But the major thing, the major thing about everything is the disconnect between the supporters, the club, yep. the owners, the directors, the gaffer, everything that's been put in place, there is no connection. Because no. what they did was cut that connection with Thomas Tuchel. Because Thomas Tuchel was the one gaffer that reignited this fan base to a next True. level of yeah. we're on we're on to something we're, we're here to fight ride and die for the chels we got a gaffer that's going to back us and fight for us supporters that was the difference every man the under respect, since then, the under respect. Yeah. jellyfish no backbone trust this process haven't won anything haven't proved themselves haven't earned any stripes to be to be worthy to be the gaffer at chelsea no credentials whatsoever. So that's what you get. And the Chelsea are not having it. You know, you brought us a proper Spursy gaffer. What do you expect us to be like? And yet we're still there. We're sitting on the fence with it, but we're still supporting it. There's no chance for Poch. There's hardly any chance for these players, apart from maybe Cole Palmer, all right? And Conor Gallagher, Thiago Silva, Reese James, he don't play. You know what I'm saying? We've got a chance for these guys. We've got our carefree chance, our Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea chance. But that's about it, bruv. It's like, yeah. it's so, like... We even, bro, we even had Peter Checker at one point where he came out and, 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 and spoke to the fans about the Super League situation. We don't even have that no more. We don't have anybody, Mate. we don't have no face in the club that we can actually identify with who you know. actually knows what it means to be Chelsea. We don't have anybody, but that's done by design, you see? And my next thing is going to say is, is that don't get it twisted, people. The next, the, the, the next group of people that are on that list to destroy that community, that divide with Chelsea, I mean, that um, unity with Chelsea Football Club is us, the fans, the ones that are actually pushing for us to go back to where we need to go. They're coming for us next. And I'm not just talking me, Johnny and Junis. I'm talking about every single one of you. Every single one of you. They want to gut it out. They want to destroy it and rebuild it in the vision that they want. They want to turn it into a club where tourists can come and watch the games and just say, well, I've been to Stamford Bridge to watch some football. Not those diehard fans that have been there week in, week out, gone to, gone to the games, suffered with Chelsea, they it, it, it enjoyed our, all of that stuff. They're trying to get it all out. They're trying to get it gone. That, right, so what they've done is they, they're trying to dilute the fan base, um, soften it, weaken it, so that the mentality yeah. adjusts to what their model's mentality is all about, which is farming, profit-making, recycling, basically what the Seagull merchants are. Yeah, let's, let's have it right. Um, and they've got, they've got to that point. You think of what they've done to this point. You have to go, you know, the only way they could do it was using all the tier ones. And the PR and all the all the mainstream media that are campaigning against Chelsea, who are happy for Chelsea to be in this situation. Let's not forget that. They're happy for us to be in this situation. So they're all for propping this. These clowns don't realise that the ones that they're using to push out their agenda will not only go against them when the time's right, yeah, and the time's coming now, let's have it right, because the supporters are landing it, but they think 
that, yeah, they're going to work with us. It doesn't work like that. They don't know the culture. They don't understand the heritage with Chelsea and the media. We are the most hated, bruv. And that's because of Roman yeah. and because of our success together. And that's what made us fight against the world. That's what made the, the, the Chelsea supporters next levels, bruv. And even Indeed. before Roman, we were next levels, bruv. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You know, we, we are the most notorious supporters. When you deep it and you you research the history of Chelsea, bruv, yeah? And shout out Chelsea old boys, yeah? RIP to our goat. We see things that they'll never see, yeah? You go back to that heritage, bruv. We originated that. You understand me? We, yep. we, we, were, we run the game. We run it all. No one will come near Chelsea, bruv. You know what I'm saying? No. Well, they're still there. And I was going to say, their approval's yeah. been given, and the, the Chelsea Supporters Trust know it. And yeah. this is why we've got this snowball effect. And this is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's not going to stop because now the supporters realize it's time to act and time to fight for our club because I guarantee it and I certify it. These owners will not change what they're doing. Until we make them change. Yep. The question I want to ask and get your ideal your opinions on, yeah, is I don't I from what I know, I think it's pretty impossible for it to change the model. But do you believe in any way that they can change the model, which would which would mean sacking Poch, sacking these mid directors, paying them out. And bringing in one elite director, one elite gaffer with his team, and buy ex some experienced players. Do you think that that can happen from us protesting, or is it just the case we? I mean, I just want them out, but protest to get them out. And before you say, all you del deluded melts out there, yeah, that keep saying they can't sell the club, yeah, you're fucking gone. You're a long way from Starbucks. I'll tell you this now. They've got Glazer's Claws, which means they can't extract money. Well, Meatloaf Bowley's extracting 20 million sitting as a chairman employee at the club. That's 200 million over 10 years. All right. Split into two five year contracts. All right. Which Bowley will have five years and Egbali will have the other five years. That's still 200 million that they found a loophole to extract the money. They found loopholes with FFP. They can find a loophole to sell the club. Let's have it right. That's what they are. Loophole merchants. But guys, answer. Uh, yeah. Whoever wants to go first. Go on, Eunice. I think, look, I think it has to come to a realisation. I just know the fan base won't, won't, won't put up with it. It'll, it'll, it'll get to a point. If Even this is just the beginning. I think it'll get to a point where... If this were to just continue, even into next season, season after, I just think it, it, it would, it would get really serious. So, I think, look, it's inevitable. Much like the examples of the other clubs, that they're gonna have to shift their model, whether they like it or not, whether they like it or not. If not, it's like I said, it's gonna kick. Why? Because when you look at, you look at Arsenal, for example, right? Um, there were the whole wet, the whole Wenger out times, all of that kicked off, banners and whatnot. Get Kronke gone after Wenger's left, Kronke out, Kronke out, Kronke out. It took Josh Kronke to come out with that public interview that he had done and the acknowledgement to speak with the fans to then shift. Stan Kronke backed out, gave Josh the keys. He went back to the States and dealt with what he's got to deal with over with, at, at, at the Rams. And Josh Kronke was the one spearheading. And what did they go and do? start to actually go and get players, start to actually think about the team, start to actually do things properly. And they've stuck with Arteta. That's the one That's the one question mark that people are like, mm, should they have stuck with Arteta or go and get an actual gaffer? You know, they might do that later. But regardless, improvement. FSG at Liverpool. There was a plane over flipping, you know, in the sky going FSG out. Yeah, what yeah. happened? Henry, John Henry had to come out and actually acknowledge and shift things. And when they did shift things, lo and behold, boom. Jürgen Klopp is already there. He's a top gaffer, whether, you know, he talks a lot of nonsense sometimes, and we've seen that recently. But you have to shift. The Glazers have gone this long 
And it's a long time that they've stayed. And, and the, the credit goes to Alex Ferguson as to why they were successful at the beginning. But in the years post Sir Alex, where they've not really seen anything, it's taken until now for them to give the keys away of the footballing operations to someone else, right? It's inevitable that these guys have to start doing things correctly on a footballing level. If not, they're just, they're not going to be able to deal with what's coming their way. They just won't, you know, they can try and stick it out and just think about the profits and whatnot. But you best believe fans will not accept a third, fourth season finishing 11th, 12th, 10th. It's not happening. It's not it's happening. happening. So I think it's a, honestly, I think it's a matter of time. I think it's a matter of time. And personally, it has to be done. If they were to just, the, the only way that they can just go, you know what, we'll just plow through it and whatever happens, happens, is if they are legit selling on day one after the 10-year period is over and they're able to give the keys away. If that's the case and they're going to try and capitalize on getting as much profit as possible on day one after the 10-year period is done, then that's a different story. But on a footballing level, they have to. They have to. Definitely. But, but, and... but, but my question is, can they, bruv? Oh, no. On, in terms of can they, I think they can. I think, look, I think they'll have to take a slap on the wrist. I think punishment's coming, whether we like it or not. Whether right, it's so points, whether it's a fine, whether I think that's coming regardless, right? They're going to have to take that. But they're going to have to start after planning in terms of how they're actually going to move forward and use budgets correctly because it's not like we're not going to spend ever. But they're actually going to have to divert and start going for quality rather than just thinking about the young player and the youth and the project and this. They're actually they're going to have to change it. I think but they what, can if they wanted to, they can. What players are going to want to come right now of, okay. of that ilk. That's, is, yeah, that's the one sticking point. Right. This is, so this so is, in other words, we have no choice but to go, we've got to wait another two years to repair this. But this is this is where I wanted to follow on from you, because because your question was a two-part question. Yeah. So this is what I was going to get on to, because you did ask, can they change things now in terms of the structure? It can be done, but because of the mistakes that they have made before this, we're going to have to take a hit and a big one as well, because it's like you said, there's certain fundamentals that must change, right? Pochettino being the smallest one out of all of the problems. And do you know how football works? If you terminate a contract before his time, there's a fee that you have to pay. So that's Pochettino. The next thing is, which I think after the owners is the most important, is Stuart uh, Win Stanley. Yeah. Them two, they must go. Now, That's we've got to pay them termination fees as well. Now, with that, we're going to have to pay the next person that with hopefully an elite recruiter that comes in, we're going to have to pay them as well. That's more money being spent. Now, that recruiter as well, you've got to bear in mind, 1,000%, if he's an elite recruiter that has built before uh, teams that have won, he's going to look at this squad and he's going to say, there's too many players in this team that are not going to cut it. So now I have to make a decision or I'm forced to make a decision to sell these players. Not only am I going to have to sell these players, I'm not going to get anywhere the, the original price tag that we sold these players for. So there's going to be a lot of hits that need to be taken. But now they've put us in a situation where we have no choice. Either way, we're going to hemorrhage, whether it's going to be money or whether it's going to be falling down the table and just continuing to regress. We're going to have to do it one way or another. We're stuck in between a rock and a hard place. But something needs to be done and it needs to be drastic because very much like you guys, I, I'm pretty sure that if these guys stay and this model continues the way it is, there is a massive, massive chance that we can just progressively get worse. A huge chance that we can just progressively get worse. So what's the next thing that we need to do? I think they're going to have to, they're going to have to cut their losses. They're going to have to try and be business savvy somehow to recoup what we lose, although it's not going to be easy. I don't know how that's going to happen. I'm not the most financially literate guy when it comes to wealth like that. But whether it's sponsorships or whatever it may be, they're going to have to do something. But one fact must remain. There has to be a wholesale change. There has to be. Manager has to go. Team needs reshuffling after we've already spent over a billion on this team. And the recruiters definitely have to go. Now, we have to now ask ourselves, are they going to be willing to do that? I don't know. No. This is why I'm thinking 
we are going to be forced to stay in this situation for at least a, a, a certain period of time, which is not good. Can I just add to that? Yeah, go on, go on, this yeah. is where this is where there are some fans that acknowledge that and go, "Yeah, this is the situation. So what are we going to do about it? Nothing. Let's just deal with it." That's a problem, you know. Yeah, yeah but Eunice, they're they're the supporters that don't believe that they can make any change or difference. No, no. They right. go, look, we're in this situation. It's not changing, is it? So, But, but right now, it? what Wrong. we're doing now, what what all the, what the Chelsea Supporters Trust is doing, what we're, what we're doing on the Minerals FC, what you lot are doing on your platforms, what all the guys, all the Minerals FC Ultras on social media are doing is relentlessly attacking yeah. those that yeah. are toxic positivity, that are spreading false narratives, that are feeding this false hope in promotion of Clown Lake. We have to attack that. I'm, I'm used to it. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm fully suited up, got all my stripes for that. But it, the more and more people that do it, it becomes too big of a problem for Clown Lake to deal with. Like right now, this is a major problem for them. Is yeah, it's they're, getting they're, there. They're, they're fucking. They're, they're thinking shit. We 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 we've, we've had the supporters in our pocket all this time, and now they're not having it. What Don't are we going to do? Because I've I've been saying this yeah. Financially, they can't change it now, and and that's my concern. And, and to get to to get to change it, the players that shout out Stanford Chidge and everyone, yeah. Chelsea fan cast and all that. And shout out the Chelsea Supporters Trust um, Sleep Out, which is pinned in the top of live chat. So if you want to donate to that, to that cause, um, please do. It's in the top of the live chat. Um, but you sell Conor Gallagher, all right? And and whether you got, everyone's got an opinion on Conor, whether you think he's our level right now, whatever, whether you think he's good enough to choke. The reality is he's our best midfielder right now. Um, he's the only piece of Chelsea DNA that we got left that's fit and available, and, and 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 do you know what I mean? Has delivered so far this season in a very poor season for us. But you sell him because you have to, just to balance things, get some sponsorships from here and there for your crooked little deals to get through the FFP. Then you've got to think about okay, where do I go next? Knowing you can't spend that big. So where are you rectifying it? And you've got to pay out Win Stanley. You've got to pay out Stuart Little. It's not possible, guys. So what they're going to do is, like I say, is rely it, upon us winning. Johnny, and, and that it might rate. be, bro, this is the thing. It might be, but it will be a move that nobody's going to want. Well, I know that. Yeah, well, if God, Reece Connor, James, If Reese yeah. James goes back to the form that he's originally, that we know him for after this surgery, and he plays the way he's been playing, Real Madrid are looking for a right back. Do you not think for a second if Real Madrid come in, A, the owners are not going to look and listen for that bid, and B, Reese James is not going to want to go? That's Reece, what's going to happen. Reese will go, but he'll go to Real Madrid. That's what's going to happen. And, and so they're now you're money. They're looking at Trent, aren't they now? So. Trent has already said they can buy me on FIFA. I don't think he'll leave Liverpool, though. He's, bro, he actually said they can buy me on FIFA. That's all he said. He's not going there. Oh, so okay, where okay. do you think Real Madrid are going next? But well, they've made it clear they need a right-back. That Now they've made it public that they need a right-back. So... Gusto? Gusto? Or Rhys James? Could be. Could there be, yeah. Go. If Reece doesn't fit, turn to Gusto. Could be. But they won't sell Gusto because they'll think we'll get more money for Gusto. We'll get Rhys James because he's pure profit. Yep. That's the difference. I'll try and push for East, 100%. Yep. But then Gusto's on Tuppence wages as well. And he yep. costs 30 million. It so makes too much sense. It, both of them work out as decent deals. But are Real Madrid likely to pay 80 million for Gusto? No. They would probably pay for Reese James. Reese James, exactly. Yeah. Right. And remember, that's a pure profit player. Yeah. Yep. So yep. that's that's inevitable. Connor, I think Connor's just got a hold tight and just say, fuck you. I'm not, I'm not letting you sell me. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm I agree. And run my contract down and really screw them over. And he's going to do Chelsea a favour by doing that. Do you see where the issue with this strategy, so-called strategy, 
right? Relying on pure profit. Yeah. Who else is coming through? <laughs> no one. No one. This is going to run out. Correct. It's going to run out. This is a, so it's going to get to a point in, let's say, if we're estimating by three years, you could possibly see Reese James has gone. Um, Gallagher's maybe gone. He's run down his contract or he's been sold, one of them. Um, you, those players are gone. Who else I'd, is coming I'd even, through? I'd your, even your add, agenda? I'd even, <laughs> no I'd even, I'd even add Enzo and and Cole Palmer to that. I was going to say going. now, if, if there's no Champions League, players like Enzo and these guys will be no Enzo. I think on his own accord will be like, yo, talking to his agent. Uh, this was a bad move. I want to go. Cole Palmer, who's actually playing his football and doing well, and he seems to be enjoying himself, he'll just get targeted, and the club will come they're, in they're and the club will go. About, yeah, um, they're already talking about increase if he gets in Euros, they're going to increase his wages because they know there's people after him. The difference is Cole Palmer's got no loyalty at Chelsea. He left Manchester City with the best yep. manager in the world right now, best team in the world right now, and he left them because he says, "I'm not going to fight to play for City. I want to play first minutes, you know, first team minutes." And he's left. So what makes you think he's going to stay at Chelsea? That's the first thing. Enzo's a good shout because you can tell Enzo's not. He's not happy. He doesn't he want to be here. If yeah. he wants, if he if he had one opportunity to leave, he's taking it like this. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. He will. He will. He will go. And then all you Enzo sexuals can fuck off with him. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, let me quickly run through these before we continue. Uh, big up to Brian. It says trust the protests. Up the minerals. Up the um, up the fucking minerals. Up the Chelsea. Long live Chelsea, old boys. Let's have it right. Yes, Don Roman. Come on. Trust the protest. You know it. You know it. Roman Abramovich! 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 You know what I mean? We've got to, we've got to salute the Don Roman. Uh, big up to oh. Thomas. He says, I salute you guys. Keep land and minerals. We are, um, we are at fucking war with these clowns. We are. We are at war. We yeah. are in protest now. This is this is outright protest, yeah? And we're all on board. Let's have it right. We're here. We're here. Uh, bring up Brian. Clown Lakes didn't even know we are relentless. They don't know. They haven't got a clue what they're dealing with. You know that. They haven't they seen nothing they, yet. They don't. They, see nothing. they don't get it. And they the point that it. you made, the point you made about the culture and the history, they, uh, they haven't got the faintest idea. You know, you, you, you're right in saying, look, Chelsea have been the most hated club and for a reason. And that was only amplified because we started winning things. Like we were successful and no one could do a thing about it. But before that, there was a whole reputation of the Chelsea fan base. And we know about this and the history and where it comes from and what happened back in the day and all of that. People just wouldn't mess with Chelsea fans. And just wouldn't play over your life. That was how it used to be. And that reputation has carried over to the point where Chelsea as a, as a club, which is hated in the public eye, or it's not looked at very nicely, all of a sudden starts winning. People hate it. Well, they hated it. And this has just been the culture across me many years. These guys have walked in. They actually have no idea what they've walked into. They really have no idea. So. Or do they? I, I always put this question out. Or do they know? Because to me, I've always called them the campaign against Chelsea. Let's not forget who the UK government, what they did. Let's not forget oh, yeah. that Rain Group was hired. Let's not forget Rain Group is associated American uh, company, broker, linked to these guys, yep. right? That yep. brokered this deal, PR'd this deal. And these guys have come in to destroy what a Russian... Don Roman has built and rebuild yeah. it their way. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's very political, but a hundred percent. I think they know, I think they, they knew what they were walking into based on that level, right. To try and take advantage of the situation, bring the club down, bring what it was all about down. I think they've done that, right. We can't deny that, but the, the reaction, um, that the fan base as a whole, I think they've underestimated. Yeah, of course they have. They've underestimated that. Yeah. And what's coming their way, and might I add, because I think we might have forgotten for a brief moment, they haven't just got us to deal with, they've got Strasbourg to deal with. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, let's have it right. Let's have it so, right. Strasbourg, two fronts. Listen, we're going to team up with Strasbourg. Let's have it right. We will do that. I, I have no doubt, bro. Yeah. yeah. You think the Chels, who are bigger, are just going to let a little Strasbourg with their ultras protest on their own against no. the owners that own our football club that we're not happy with? No chance, bruv. No. That's why Clown Lake are wet in their pants. They are worried, mate, because, like I say, the only thing that can change the fate of both clubs is an elite protest, yeah? Because that PR, forget the stickers is is fantastic because they're all clowns. We know that. But this PR, where your own supporters are going against you and you are PR-driven and everyone knows it, whereas, like, for example, the Glazers, they're not PR-driven. They don't care. They don't even attend yeah. games. They don't go in the dressing room. These guys do. These guys are all about the image and PR. So let's throw back the PR Happy Mills on a Golden Minnows FC platter to every single one of them, all right, that they won't be able to digest. Let's have it right. That's the only way. And it will work. I guarantee it. It will work. I know it will. Um, big up to Brian. Big up to Dusty Rhodes, man. No surrender up the Chels. Let's have it right. Max. No surrender, bruv. We will keep going. We will keep landing it. The circus is continuing, but we will get rid of the circus. We will eliminate it, bruv. Yeah? And Dusty Rose, let's have it right. Yeah? He's been here since day one, mate. Yeah? Day one. All right? Minnows FC Ultra, bruv. Let's have it right. Respect to you and appreciate you supporting the channel, as always, my geezer. Uh, big up to Eros as well. He says, of course it takes time. It's a process to ruin an elite football club as Chelsea. We need a few more seasons, but not to compete in the UCL, to ruin us, to not even have a chance of competing with the elite crime late out up the Chelsea. And these are this is all facts. You know, the way we look at it, lads, yeah? Big up to you for, for supporting the channel. All the ones that are not saying this, all the ones that are against the stickers, the Chelsea Supporters Trust, they're the enemy, bruv. They're, they're bull. They're in the pockets. And the ones that are in the pockets, all the ones that follow them are in their pocket. Therefore, they're yep. in the pockets of Clown Lake. They're the ones we have to attack. We need to bring them onto our side. And that's, and that's going to be difficult. And that's why they love a divide. Divide and conquer. This is, this is the thing. It's like, we, we shouldn't even have to try. It's right there in front of you. No. If you really... But this is what I say. Like, you, you, you're exactly. separating the weeds here. It's like, at, by this point in time, if you're not seeing what's going on in front of you or you're not taking a particular stand, then it's either, like you said, you're bought or B, you're fucking stupid, bruv. Like, you have no level of IQ right in front of you if you do not see what is going on. And I say that respectfully. Do you know what I mean? Because it's all there for us to see. It's coming out of their mouth. It's producing its, its, its fruits on the football pitch. Like, this, all of this is not happening for no reason. The protests are happening for a reason. Or the beginning yeah. of one. All of these stickers, it's all happening for a reason. We should all be on the same page at this point in time. Yeah? And there are, and there, and there are content creators that I know, personally, that are going on mainstream platforms. And again, I'm not taking a dig at them. But if you're on these platforms, your your, your Sky Sports, your The Zones, your NBCs, and so on and so forth over here in the States, use that platform to be vocal. Tell the truth. It's not like you've got an agenda or you're lying. Tell the truth. You they have an opportunity. They can't, they, they can't do it because they're, they're more interested in their own personal career and game than the club itself that they work for or work with or are want to be associated with, which is what you call a sellout. All right. And unfortunately it's in, it's infiltrated this entire YouTube, um, all the mainstream media platforms. That's what it's about. Right. That's what separates me, separates Eunice, separating you now, Gunny from these wrong ones. All right. The reality is, it doesn't matter whether they say it or don't say it. Because let's have it right. Like I always said, 
it won't be a it'll be a matter of time before you lot have to jump on the Minnells FC gravy train. You say. have to say mm -hmm. the truth, all right? Because the say. truth is being spoken on every public platform going. Sky Sports are saying it anyway, with Chelsea supporters yep. trust there. All right, talk sport are saying it for a second day running. The stickers are saying it, the tier one journalists say it. So if you're not saying it, well, let's have it right. You're in their pocket, you're with them, and you're against the Chels. It's the only way I see and it. And even if you get another thing, yourselves. another thing, even if it gets to a point where they do talk, people are just going to realize, well, you waited this long to speak because it's cool to talk about, and you're not going to get no repercussions from it. This is the thing, and and you know, it's going to get to that point whether people like it or not. It's going to go one or two ways. It's either Chelsea start becoming successful again, this all you know gets blown under the carpet, fantastic, or this is going to go to some levels where no one can deny it any longer. So the ones that are denying it now or want to try and ride the process, it's going to get to a point where their backs are against the wall and they're looking at it and going, I don't have anything else to say now. Like, that's it. It's, it's staring you in your face and it's obvious, clear as crystal, you have to acknowledge it. It's going to get to that point. Let me, let me, uh, like, Luke Eunice, no, I know disrespect. I know you've worked with him, but that George Benson fella, right? He hasn't done one video on the stickers. He hasn't done one video. No, I've, um, I mean, p personally, I speak with him from time to time. Right. I know. He, he's, I, he's, to be fair. Him, you don't, you don't I know, no, no, I know, I know, I know. Um, but he's, Personally, and he's told me this, um, and I'll say it here, it, the whole thing with Chelsea has been so demoralising that you can see he's uploading less, he's not talking about anything less, he's just completely come off it, he's not feeling it at all, right? And that's the thing about some fans. But this is also my point. It's going to get to a point where people, whether they like it or not, have to acknowledge what's going on. This is why it's better sooner rather than later. Just do it. Do just it. do it. No one has to mention me or anything. I know everyone's got a gender on me. I don't give a shit. Yeah. It's about the club. And we all love our club. And our club has got no identity anymore. We go to games like it's like the people you meet. That's it. That's all you're going for now. Exactly. It's, yeah. It's yeah. just like well, how far this down is the point. in the mud do you want to go? This is a point. When people, there's people that come, let's say, at us or whoever's you know talking about this online and going oh the, you know you're you're part of the problem this is why it's gone to this you know it's not even us it's this has gone so mainstream like look the cst had to come out and actually write a flip in there do you understand what that means that's got nothing to do with myself or johnny or you or <laughs> the, like, the cst who represent thousands and thousands of chelsea fans who's got memberships for thousands of chelsea fans are talking with sky sports news during a mainstream hour to discuss this whole thing at Chelsea and acknowledge that there's stickers around the concourse. And you don't want to talk <laughs> about it. mainstream issue. Are you joking me? This is bigger than, the, this is this is a bigger issue than what some people think. They I think tell you still what, the, the new we've one, never, Johnny. We've never had a protest. Chelsea, only, only Super League. Like, over the last, what? Oh, Roman here. When have we protested? When have we had to go through something like this? Never had to. This Never is happened. history in the making. Yeah. And and we need every platform. Has as, as the failed actor Jennings said anything? I don't watch it. Of course him. not. Has he, guys, has he not. said anything? On fair, Fox um, has he said anything on his channel? To be fair, he, he's, he's, he's had an interview um, with... Is that is it Stephen Borson? Or the, 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 the financial yeah, yeah, guy that went on Talk Sport to talk about Chelsea's mess, right? He brought him on to try and go deeper into the details. And I saw at the start of the video, he said that, you know, um, that he's been against these owners from the very beginning. And then he goes and he said he wants to dive into the, into the detail to try and find out how much of an actual mess Chelsea are in. So that whole video took place to try and, you know, mention just how far this could actually go. But he said what? He's for, he's been at the owners from the beginning. He's been, he's, been, he's, been, he's been against the owners from the very beginning. Bullshit. He's a he's a liar. <laughs> he's a fucking liar. I'm with you on that, Johnny. Trust me. Bro, go on his streams and videos and you'll see. The geezer wanted yeah. Tuchel sacked. Yeah. He made Tuchel out videos. 
50 gender on sacking Tuchel, which is what these fucking melts, these clowns wanted to do to allow them to implement their structure because he didn't want to be a yes man. So he fell in the pocket of these fucking clowns. He wanted jellyfish potter. Then goes, oh, get him out. They're all flip-flops. They're all hypocrites. They're all in there for their payday. You know what I'm saying? Get real. Get with a fucking program. You know what I'm saying? Understand what we are at Chelsea. Understand what's happening. You know, we love our club. Yeah. We love football. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and th- like what, what, what's worth, what's more than that? Th- this is, this is a key thing that I want to mention is why are we talking like this or reacting like this or fans kicking off in the way that they're starting to kick off or all these things that are going on now, protests starting to happen and whatnot. Why? There's a genuine care for the club and people realise that the mess that we've been put in has all been done voluntarily. It's not been done because of circumstances or been done because the club are in a situation. It's not. It's been done voluntarily. These lot did not have to come in and cut, gut everyone out, cut everyone out, um, flip everything on its head. They didn't have to do that. It was premeditated, pre-calculated. Of course. They knew what they were doing from the moment they they bought Chelsea Football Club. This is where people think, oh, they just miraculously uh, decided to, you know, gut the team out and go with a, a youth, super youth team and uh, base their model on Red Bull. They said that, but when they just bought the club before they could even recruit anyone, right? Let me let me explain. These guys are so calculative, so PR-driven, that they gave you the false narrative that they were going to back Tuchel, only to sack him five, six games in the season, go and play sporting director to make everyone think we're buying these players, we're going this way and we're carrying it on to then just change it into how they want to. But they can only change it like that without an elite gaffer like Thomas Tuchel, without Petr Cech there, without Marina there, without these the guys that were with Roman Abramovich, without the the Cobham uh, Academy, the, the groundsmen going and things like this, you know, unnecessary. But they had it all, it all structured in plan to put everything in place that they want in place and transfer a model that doesn't translate to English football and definitely not to an elite football club like Chelsea. Yeah. They've done that now and everyone is seeing the, the results. Proof's in the pudding at the end of the day. Yep. Yep. And this goes back to the point. This is where people need to realise, like many have, right? Myself included, that this isn't just a footballing issue. You know, that I think at the very beginning of all this, um, everyone's so focused on the football. No one knows a thing about these owners. They've come in and they've done what they've done or they've started to do what they're doing. They're playing sporting director. Or I will, we, we roll with it. And then you begin to realise that this goes beyond just the football on the pitch. And you start to see what's happening for what is actually happening. What is actually going on at the club? What's going on behind the scenes? What's happening in terms of the infrastructure? How is it being run? If you haven't acknowledged that, then you're not going to get to the root of the problem. This is why people are now kicking off. Why? Because they've lost complete trust in the football club as a whole, as an organisation. Another thing is, is people need to realise billionaires don't do things on a day-to-day basis. They have forecasts years ahead of what they're planning to do. Data. AI. Exactly. Uh, I want to bring up um, this fella. Can I say, Rip, gone. The fraudulent side. <laughs> yeah, let's have it right. Right, this geezer today, they were only accepting on Talk Sport pro Clown Lake agenda callers. All right. Secondly, he called the ones that created the sticker protest, put the sticker protest out, morons. Let's have it right, Simon Jordan. Yeah, hmm. you got no right to disrespect supporters that are fighting for their club. He says, what are you, what are you moaning about? You spent, a, you know, you spent a billion. A billion on what? What have we spent a billion on, Simon Jordan? And you said it's many mistakes. A billion of mistakes. And we're supposed to sponsor that? And promote that? No. Calling us morons, yeah? You're the biggest moron, yeah? I'll tell you why. Because you're a failed club owner 
from a mid non elite club. That's the first thing. Second thing is, are. why would we take your opinion seriously anyway? Why are you brown nosing Clown Lake? And let's have it right. Shout out to White, who's the co host on that. Yeah. He said live on Talk Sport, Clown Lake. They're getting called Clown Lake. Yeah. That's the supporters PR, mate. Yeah. You call us morons? Nah. You lot of the morons that's sitting in your little studio speaking about everything that we've created for you to speak. We create the narratives now. The Chelsea supporters create the narratives. Not you lot. You lot are there to just sit there and debate it and talk about it. When in reality, there's nothing you can do, nothing you can say. And the funny thing is, they didn't clip that, people. TalkSport didn't clip this one today and put it on the timeline. No copy and paste merchants, pies and mash, Chelsea Dodgers. None of these lot were recycling what Simon Jordan said live on radio today. To have it right. I wonder why. Because the order is from Clown Lake is to stop this narrative getting pushed out. Because the one that's pissed off Matt Law, let's have it right. He's disrespected. He's not getting his information no more. He's a football guy. He don't give a fuck. He don't like it. No, no journalist is, is loyal anyway. Whether they're getting paid or not getting paid, they're not loyal. Sure. They're snakes. There's snakes and ladders in that game. I mean, if you don't know that, then you're a long way from that suit camera. Not like us, bruv. But the bottom line is, he's put it out. He's dished it out. Reputable. And he's got, he's got a stigma in the Chelsea fan base. I've come at him a few times. That's why I got blocked by him. I'm still blocked by Matt Law. And here I am propping him for telling the truth. If you tell the truth, I'll prop it. Yeah. And I'll, I'll sponsor it. And the reality is, they want to stop this narrative. It's up to Chelsea supporters, platforms, to continue pushing it out. You have to keep pushing it out and fighting it. Don't let international break, you know, simmer it down. You're having a laugh. And these players that are earning astronomical wages being given the 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 uh, right to wear the Chelsea jersey, all right, giving the golden ticket to be a first teamer in our squad at the young age that uh, they are. When you hear, you know, Frank Lampard's Peter checks and all the old school players saying, you know, they wouldn't even they wouldn't even get into the team. You know what I'm saying, Thanks. right? They're in the first team. They're running our first team, and they're all vibes FC, lit getting enjoying their payday. You players, the message to all the players is now you're going to know what it's like to feel real pressure, hostility and toxicity against these clowns. And you're going to have to perform for these clowns because they own you. These clowns own you. And you've signed NDAs to these clowns. Us supporters, we're with you. We support the players. We support the, the gaffer, right? That's what we do. Yep. We're not supporting these clowns, what they're doing. It's just that they've brought you here. So you're here. You have to represent the Chels. How are you going to deal with it? What's your mentality saying? Because we're used to having mentality monsters at Chelsea that can deal with anything. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Facts. Let's have it right up to Chels. Big up to everyone in the chat. Smash the likes. Uh, I'll run for a few of these. Big up to Brian. Clown Lake certified trash. Let's have it right. Uh, big up to Tommy. He says, let's uh, let's get a Clown Lake out. Uh, time I'd square love that. Billboard. I would love that. I Mate, love if you that. can do that. Everyone's got the image now. Listen, I don't know. That Maybe we mad. raise some money to do it. I don't know how much it is. Thomas, you got my email, my geezer, uh, on my description. on my. Uh, it's on my um, YouTube. Anyone Greeny, who knows any New York links for each other. I might do. I uh, at the at, at the football factory. I might do. No, I'm serious. Fair I might do. Fair I enough. might do. I need to I'll talk to I'll talk to Jack, my guy at the football factory. That's the for football factory is the biggest uh, football bar in, in New York City. So and me and him have got a very good relationship with good friends. So I'm gonna speak to him and see what can be done. I'm definitely thinking about putting a banner in his in in the bar with that picture with those sticker pictures. I was thinking about that earlier. So yeah, that's a conversation that definitely needs to be had. There you go. All the trails together. We can do whatever it takes. Um big up to um RJM Chelsea Blue Commander. Let's have it right. Ultra bruv. Uh, big up, guys. Up the Minnows FC. Trust the protest. Clown Lake out. Let's have it right. Keep fighting for our Chels before we become uh, extinct. 
It's not wrong. Um, Bill up, Brian says, need those stickers. LA and Times Square next. Facts, yeah. I'd love that. Yeah, that's uh, you know what I'm saying. Uh, bring me proper Chelsea owners only. Clown Lake out. Uh, big up the Chelsea Empire. He says, big up, boys. I'm sending this as an appreciation for what you boys do. Frank LeBeouf landed it. Don't go to games. That's what private equity groups understand. Big up, Eunice Van Dam. Big up, Gunny. Respect. Love that. And you know what? Frank LeBeouf, if he ever watches, I want him on this channel. I want Frank LeBeouf to come on here. And I'll tell you why. Because he's the one person who's on a big platform on ESPN who has been relentlessly yes, speaking yeah. facts and yep. truth. Mm -hmm. Because he came from an era at Chelsea that laid the foundations for what Roman inherited. Agreed. And LeBeouf stands for something. He stands for Chelsea. You know what I'm saying? He was a baller as well. So one, hopefully uh, Frank Lebeef will, will land his minerals and come on irrespective. In fact, where I was sitting with Nick Smith, we had Gab, Gab Marcotti was sitting. Uh, he's, oh. he's got seats in the Matthew Arden lower, believe it or not. Um, but big up to Gab Marcotti as well. He's a legend. A big up and Bark Tech Minerals. He says, do you guys think Brohar is gone? And who else up the Minerals FC? Yeah, he's um, out of here. He's gone. Yeah, he's gone. Don't know how much for, but he's gone. Connor's going to go. Um, Trev is going to go. Trev will go. Paul. Um, Matson's gone. Hall's gone. Oh, I'm Munich are after Matson. <laughs> oh, no. He's not good enough for Chelsea. But they're going to get rid of Alfonso Davis, who's got big wages, and apparently we can't afford the wages. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, Eunice is shot at pieces, bruv. He doesn't know what to think, bruv. <laughs> it's, just, it, it's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out how you should be able to to, to balance a football team. It, it doesn't. It doesn't, you know. Um, you can still have best of both worlds. I don't understand, like, even if these guys have come in just wanting profit, like, I, I get that. Great. And you can do that. But win. <laughs> What do you not want to win? It's it's crazy, and th this this whole thing about bringing the wage cap down, not going for these ballers, not going for these sort of targets. You know, um, I saw talk that Rodrigo from Real Madrid could be available at some point. Um, <laughs> yeah, get him. Um, Benassa AC Milan could be available. Um, Alfonso Davis is definitely leaving. Um, Theo Hernandez, as a consequence, could be heading out as well. Musiala is leaving Bayern Munich. Musiala, he's been off like Bayern Munich want to keep him. And but he's one of us, like, bruv. He's a cobham boy as well, fam. We're just not going to go near any of these players. They won't we're not going to go near him. Champions League football. And, and not only that, like you say, the wage structure restricts you. So I'm saying to you, that's why the model can't change now. Nothing will change. It's like Sterling take it or leave it. Sterling's going as well. Don't believe this talk that he's he's gonna stay longer. I no, agree. they want his I wages agree. off the books. They'll have they him want him gone. gone. Yeah. yeah, him, yeah. Cucurella, because he's part of the old way structure as well. They're getting them right out of the door. They want all Chile them play. Well. It's who? Chile. Yeah, they're gonna get him out of the door as well. Anybody that's ab that that's above that one hundred and fifty k, they're gone. And if they can get rid of them this summer, they will. They're out of it. 100%. This is why I'm saying we have to stop the, like We have to stop them, right? Because I'm not saying, oh, because of Sterling, because of Kukura. I'm just saying the wage structure is going to kill our club furthermore. Destroy it. We'll, right. ne we'll never be top four club again. We will never be a top no. four club under these owners. They don't want to be top four. They don't care about winning, but they will make money. Because they're attracting all the young players to Chelsea, who they see as London, biggest club in London, most heritage, most successful, watching them as when they were in their nappies, all right, aspiring, yeah. going, I can play for Chelsea. Develop them, sell them on for double the money. Makes me fucking sick, bro. There was a point where if you were not top five in your position, you couldn't sniff Chelsea Football Club. You weren't allowed on King's Road. Yeah. Mate, when allowed that you outside the stadium, if you are not top five in your position, then you're not coming to the club. 
if you weren't even a fully fledged international, you're not you coming, coming to Chelsea to the point where most of the team were all international captains. Like you needed to have the armband in your national team to play at Chelsea. Like if not, you weren't you on you're on the bench. As what's what's this year? As good as as good as Cole Palmer is, he's not getting a sniff in them teams back in the day. And it'll no, be no, he'd no. struggle to even no. make the bench. None of them, Gunny. Not none a single fact, not a single one of them. None, none of them listen, none of these players get into our recent Champions League winning team. None of them get into our 2012 Champions League winning team. Definitely not. No none way. of them get into pre-Roman team with Hullets and Bialis and LeBuffs, bruv. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Like, so what fucking standards is everyone sponsoring here? What's all this PR? Propping all this this mediocrity. I I, yeah. What is wrong with people, man? This is rolling over and accepting it, man. Oh, their child support your players. It's only been 18 months the owners have had this club. What? And you know what winds me up the most, bro? They go, oh, we weren't competing with Roman Abramovich near the end of his tenure. Shut up. Yeah, yeah he, no. was, he was, he yeah. was, uh, he was, he was, the club was capitulating on the Roman. Yeah, of course it was. What's it now? What's it? What's it? It's capitulating in the realms of the earth, bruv. Yeah? Not even underwater. Buried. And it's actually mad. It. It's mad. In, in, in a period at the club where we were meant to be in some sort of a transition, right, on the Roman, you could have classed that was a transitional period, right? We were starting to find, we we're trying to find our feet. You know, um, we hadn't won a league since 2017. Top four, third, that bracket that was that was seen as transition that was seen as not good enough right the same people that say we were capitulating at that point are the ones accepting being 11th twice oh they've got an excuse oh, for everything they've got an that excuse for everything. Any oh you have to give them give them three four seasons they still have to develop they haven't had much Top quality first team football. This is their first time playing. Yeah, Nicholas Jackson. You can see how he's progressing slowly. Oh, don't worry about Enzo. He's gonna he's gonna pick up all of these guys. They're just somehow all magically gonna go on the same trajectory, which goes this way. Yeah, Thank that's you. what they all think. But this is a, this is the point. Is like, and what you said at the start of the stream, which was bang on the money, is you can't just focus on players and gaffers, right? Yeah, like, no matter what, you can debate till the sun comes down, bruv, all right, about this player and that player, all right? But nothing, it doesn't change anything. Like, sacking a gaffer doesn't change it. Bringing in another talented player for this player that's not as good as you thought it was doesn't change anything because the structure behind is what's dictating that on the field. Exactly. Right. And That's this it. is what I said, and, and Big Up Troops is in the chat as well, but this is what I was saying on his channel. Right after the FA Cup, when, when we beat Leicester, right, I was I was saying, yeah, it's good we're in the semi-final, but the bigger picture does not allow me to be as happy as I should be, right? And in the comments, I had Chelsea fans saying, well, like, you should be happy. We're still in contention to win the FA Cup. The future's bright. It's only been 18 months, yeah? You're, you're, you're being too extreme. You're being too this and that. No. These no, I'm sorry. They adverts the the future's bright, the future's, the future's orange, orange, bro. orange, yeah. ain't, <laughs> in, bro. orange ain't in existence, bruv. Just like Chelsea right now. You know what I'm saying? Let's have it right. And this is a great point, all right, um, about the media, especially talk sport, and mainly media fans treating Chelsea supporters same way more and same way spoiled because of yeah. how how much money's been spent. But let's have it right. We didn't ask to go and shop at Primark, bruv. We wanted to go stony, bruv. You know what I'm saying? We wanted to buy the elite crepes, the elite... Well, we, we could have just gone to our academy compared to the shit that we bought and done yeah. better. Yeah, our yeah. academy's clear. Bro. Which we could have just shopped at home. We was Which already selfridges at home. This is another point as to what is the actual strategy, what is going on. Because if this was truly about youth, if this was truly about bringing players, you know, at a young age and trying to develop them for real, we would have definitely had a couple of lads come through the academy by now in two years of this ownership, 100%. 100%. There hasn't been there hasn't been anyone. There's been Gilchrist, right? 
who's been given a nod. And that was at a time where we were struggling to actually get defenders on the pitch. He had to be called up and he's shown what he was worth to a certain extent and he's been given a chance. Apart from that, though, we weren't even paying, paying an eyelid towards the academy. And then we're in a situation with injuries. Poch turns to the academy, brings some players up, sticks them on the bench, doesn't play them. So what is this? If we're talking about youth, if we're actually talking about young players, if we're actually doing all of that, it's not about that, though, is it? Because if it was, we'd be looking to Cobham. We'd be looking to our academy and trying to implement some of our own. But we're not doing that. We're going to try and bring players in and then flip them and then sell them and then just do it that way. Yeah, the, the academy is there to bankroll the next young signings that they sign from Brazil, Ecuador, exactly. and different continents. Exactly, right? yeah. Exactly. Um, and that's why the young talent we have that, that now is coming a dying breed because of everything Roman's built, that's coming to an end, that life cycle in Cobham, right? And yeah. not only is there going to be no value there for these clowns, when I said to everyone last year... I said that these deals, Enzo's, Mudrix, uh, Casale, they're done. They're not happening again. You're not going to get yep. these deals again. That that Casale deal was the last deal that you're going to get where you're all celebrating. And don't get me wrong, we all did to an extent. We all, you know, we thought they're great signing this and that. But the bottom line is, you've you've taken out all experience and men out of our out of our team and our dressing room. You know, so. None of these young players have got anything to look up to, have a benchmark, have standards, have discipline, have direction, leadership. There's none of that. These lot have got to be turned into leaders. Well, funny enough, you're buying players that might not necessarily not be leaders, never will be a leader. This so is the things. You're, you're, it's you're like Goonie said. You're trying to make that out of nothing. Yeah. It's like Goonie said, how do you expect everyone to grow on the same level? It's not going to happen. No. This is, where, tells you this, that. Is, the this is where... Uh, what, this, just, this is the proof in the pudding that they're relying on anything, that just data. They're just looking at computer screens and going, this is what we got to do. That's, that's the proof in the pudding. Because on a logical perspective, they wouldn't have done this. Do you know what it but is right now? Them to do it. Do you know what it is right now? It's near in the Matrix. It's like that. <laughs> 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 yeah? Yeah. It's fucking... Yeah. Like Clown Laker having a having a having a bad time, mate. It's a, it's a yeah. joke. And, and, and watch and watch Cobham because of, of of how we're gonna neglect this first team. Watch the dip on Cobham over the next several. One hundred percent. Watch. Yeah, yeah mate, because people say, "Oh, oh, go oh Cole Palmer is not a, a top player by accident." Look at where this boy's come from. Yeah, come from, from yeah, he's yeah. been at Manchester City for the for all of his career. Who played in this position at Manchester City? David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, who was this coach telling him to go and watch every weekend when he was at home? Who was his homework? David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, right? This is who they're looking to when they're going to watch first team games. They all have the same pattern of play. Each each um academy club um level, they all play the same football because they've got the top talents in the world to look at and say, this is the development uh, development path that you're going to take. He's here. We're going to show you how to get close to that or even surpass that now when you look at our academy they're looking at guys that they don't Can't even throw the ball. I, I swear we were we were looking at buying a player who's had 45 minutes of senior football oh uh Esteval, the brazilian kid we're still <laughs> looking to buy him for 40 million bruv don't get it twisted <laughs> yeah man yeah, yeah. And what are we doing that because his name's got william in it yeah <laughs> And, and, and there's so to my question what, is 30 million for this other Brazilian kid. The 30 is it 30 million, 40 million for an 18 one? year old, another Brazilian, bloody hell. Which I, I, I know about the French kid, but he's turned us down and he's going Real Madrid instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, the French centre yeah. back. He said, yeah, even the young, that. you know, what's funny, right? They said, Oh, clown legs, they're so fucking clowns, proper clowns. You know what I'm saying? They go, oh, we're not going to play 60 million for Hendrix. We don't inflate the market. So we'll let Real Madrid inflate the market for us and buy for 60 million. Yeah. And then yeah. we'll go out and buy 40 million bad players and young kids. Who, who's, who's, not not played, who's not even played a full 90 yet at senior level. <laughs> it's had it's, way it's, less experience than Hendrix. Hendrick is actually a baller. Like you look at Hendrick and you yeah, can just think baller. like, you know what? There's there's something here. Yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna ignore that, allow Real Madrid to inflate, and then go in for someone who's not played a full 90. And, and watch this. 
this is what Brilliant. baffles me even more about this Esteval kid that we're trying to sign. Haven't we got Ang uh, Angelo, who's also Angelo a right Gabriel. winger, at Strasbourg? Don't yeah. we have Madweka, who's also a right winger, at Chelsea Football Club? So, where are these guys all going to play? Strasbourg. <laughs> Oh, sorry. They tried to buy stakes in sport in Lisbon, if everyone remember, when we tried to sign Ugarte. Eh? Oh, yeah, 10%. Reported us. Oh, they got we exposed, yeah. They, they yeah, snitched yeah, on them yeah. and said, no, nah, they, they're not really trying to buy Ugarte. They're trying to buy our club. And That's don't let Ziyech go under the radar where these lot, these clowns, messed up the papers three times yeah. for his transfer on deadline day. And then Jellyfish yeah, Potter played him, and I was in the shed for that Fulham game. Played him the, the, the day after deadline day, bro. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. They done the same with Cucurella. He was ready to go to Man United. He was ready to yeah, go to Man United yeah. the week before, yeah. and, and then, then we were starting our first game or something ridiculous like that. What yeah. message is this? Set? I don't get it. This club is in tatters, bro. Absolute yeah, but, tatters, yeah, mate. The standards, DNA, everything's been stripped out. No joke. Uh, big up to Pista Eros. This is about selling Connor or anyone else. Have no illusions. Crime Lake will sell any and every player they can want. We know they only watch uh, the monetary aspect and the club is just a business aspect where only customers crime let out. It's fact, you know, you can't... Listen, you got rivals coming out saying, when I heard some, uh, a Real Madrid fan, yeah, came out and said, I watched your stream, Johnny, where you compared Ratcliffe to Jose Feliciano, uh, Bowley and Egbali. And I did comparisons, small sippets, of when they speak, when they took over the club. None of them were on the same level of Ratcliffe, all right? And the one that caught, the, the, the raised the alarm bells was Feliciano, bruv, who said yeah. it's more important to increase business value than win or lose on the field. Yeah, it's not about, um, it's not all about winning or losing on, on the pitch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I'm sorry. That, that, I couldn't believe when I heard that. Anyone, yeah. anyone sponsoring these clowns, yeah, like understand what's running our football club. This is the thing. Add two and two together. Listen to all of those things that they've said from out of their own mouths and then look at where we are almost two years in and where we're continuing to head. Put that together and tell yourself, are you happy? Do you think it's all going to change tomorrow night? <laughs> yeah. It is. Put two and two together. If you get five, well, you need to go back to school and do some maths because... You're not, uh, you're not exactly on the same wavelength. You've not seen it for what it actually is. Simple as that. And people, this is why I said earlier on, people are going to clock on at their own rate. And it's going to get to a point where it's not just about clocking on anymore. It's going to be, it's in their face. It's obvious now. It's clear as crystal. It's been exposed. You ain't got a choice but to say, crap. <laughs> this is actually what it was and what it was worth. This is actually what's going they, on. They will all follow suit. Like I say. Chelsea, Supporters Trust, the Ultras, all the proper Chels, they lead the charge. They're the ones that create it. They're the ones that authorise it, set it up. And after that, like I say, Snowball, everyone else will follow suit, no matter what, because you'll have to. Because why would you want to be left out of that? Why would you want to go against the Chels that are protesting and fighting for the club? Of course you're not. You're going to be on the same page. You know what I'm saying? It's inevitable. So I'm not worried about them anymore. I don't care. I mean, I wasn't worried in the in the first place. I always knew we'd get to this position, but um, I, I will say now it's we got the power. We do have the power now. Uh, big up Nathan Hill. Clear Lake and Bowley going against Chelsea and Strasbourg fans. They're going to crap themselves when protest starts happening up the Chelsea. Yeah, well, it's already happening. It's already happening. Shout out Chelsea, old boys. Come on. Trust the protest. We speak the truth. Up the Minnows FC. Love. Um, big up to Thomas. Johnny is this generation's closest thing to Einstein. Up the Chelsea. Never, never. In the words of Kanye West, nowhere near it, bruv. We're the closest thing to Einstein on the Minnows FC, bruv. Yeah. In fact, we're clear of Einstein, bruv. Let's have it right. Yeah. <laughs> clear of him, bruv. He was fraudulent, mate. Yeah. Let's have it right, just like just like Darwin was. Um, right, so <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro. Facts, facts, facts. <laughs> you know saying? We learned it for what it is, bro. 
yeah. Listen, yeah. what likes we on? Smash the likes, every single one of you. Smash the likes. Um, hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 10K. Let's have it right. Um, what do we think? What do we think is going to happen from now to our next game? Because our next game's Burnley, right? At home. Yeah. Burnley at home. Yeah. Well, we'll I, th I think we'll win that. I think we'll win that. But it's also a case of there's Burnley, um, Man United. Ah, yes. At home. And there's still quite a bit of games until we play Man City at the FA Cup. Because that's, look, right now, realistically, I don't feel like this is going to die down. If, what, if I'm predicting, right, if I'm going to try and put a prediction, I think things will level. I think we'll start, we'll keep seeing like stickers and whatnot and what's going on. But I do think Chelsea will beat Burnley. The Man United game, God knows. All right, this one, God knows. And we can't lose that one because it's Man United at home. <laughs> like, you know, just like in the same manner that we lost to United at Old Trafford and that was embarrassing, right? Even though it wasn't a heavy scoreline, but it was ridiculous because they were in the mud just yeah, as much they, as we yeah. were. They were, yeah. They were worse. Now, they're coming to the bridge. They can't do a number on us because if they do, that's I know that's going to send people over the edge. It's Man United. Yeah, humiliating. It'll be humiliating, yeah. It, it can't it can't happen. Because you know but, we still yeah, go on. Yeah. No, no, but I reckon there's a chance. I reckon that it could. I reckon it, but then after Sheffield United and brought and then look, and then there's Brighton away, Man City, Aston Villa at Villa. That's where it starts getting us a little serious. And that's where the FA Cup is is a must, whether we like it or not. Even if we're playing Man City, one of the best teams on the planet, don't care. It's a must because that's the situation we put ourselves in. We have to yeah. win the FA Cup if we want Europa League football, if it's going to give us something, right, to take forward into next season. That's what the club are left with. So, and is it going to happen? Realistically, no. Um, realistically, <laughs> Man City, you look at it and go, Man City. On a, on a cup day. You know, Man City in the league, they can be a little dodgy at times, but you put them against the sword and Man City come out that are chasing, let's have it right, they're chasing the treble again. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to actually yeah, go for yeah. it consecutively. Like, that's bonkers. That's nuts. So, it's not going to be they're, easy. They're full strength, pretty much. Basically, yeah. Basically, yeah. So, if I'm if I'm looking at the fans and I'm looking at a prediction, I think for now, I think he'll level. The Man United game is a big one. I think that's going to be a catalyst as to whether things stay how they are or they're going to accelerate because you can't lose that one. And then going to City and all of that, that's where things could either completely calm down or completely hit the fan. I think that's going to be the turning point. I think between between now and Burnley, before Chelsea play, we're going to see a lot of damage control from the owners. Yeah, because their 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 image has been tarnished bad with these with these stickers and obviously the Matt Law report as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there will be damage control. I don't know what that's going to come in the form of. If it's going to be false promises. If it's going to be being linked to exciting players that they know we're not going to get, like your Musialas and so on and so forth, but just expect it to be pushed heavy because that right there has hurt them. It's I'm hurt them. Big on you, Eunice, bruv. Don't worry about <laughs> but whoever's got, I'm uh, One thing I'm going to say whoever made that sticker, I strongly, strongly suspect they watch this channel. And by chance, if you watch this channel, oh. Please let me know how I can get those stickers so I can start putting them up all over New York. I don't care if they know it's me. I will stick those all over New York. Every football bar that I know, I'll cl I'm scared of heights, but I will climb up that Statue of Liberty and stick it in the middle of her face, mate. Yeah, so they know. Yeah, we need to make this happen. 100%. Let me know where to get them stickers from. I don't know if they're copyrighted and if I can make my own thing. But something has to happen. We've got to do this. Bruv, I'm sure you can just make them. Just make them, bruv. True. Yeah, true. That. Yeah, I mean, yeah next got, alternative everyone's is... got the image. Take the image, yeah. 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 It's done. It's there. It's out. It's there. These are these are golden, man. These are golden. I mean, like I say, the person's proper chels. Um, 
definitely influenced by us on the minerals FC, and that's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, hundred like, percent. I mean the fact the fact that the word clown lake has now gone mainstream is something I didn't have on my bingo on my bingo card. That's for sure. Mate, yeah, I've been saying Clown Lake for about 10, 10 months, 11 months, bro. It's been non-stop <laughs> yeah. Clown Lake. Yeah. These, I've yeah. been calling these lot clowns for, yeah. Mate, I even scrolled today. I went on, I went all the way down my lives. I was like this. Ooh, 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 ooh. All the way down 12, 12 months ago, bro. Bowley yeah. Clown, everything, man. I've been at it since, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, respect to them because... It, it's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's just a catalyst, and it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's supporting the Chelsea supporters trust as well. It's, it's, it goes hand in hand, and everything works together, and it's all meant to be. I'm, a, I'm a believer of things happen for a reason, and, and it was always going to be an organic thing. And I see Steve, uh, Steve G in there. Shout out to you, my geezer, um, at Villa away, Villa Park. It was toxic, like. Roman chants were loud. You oh, saw, yeah. um, uh, was it BBC? They they turned it down. Um, and then Connor obviously got the first goal. You see what I'm saying? Connor's clutch in that sense. Like, he'll do everything for Chelsea. You know, if he doesn't score that goal and, and that goes on... It kicks off. It yeah. kicks off. Yeah, yeah. In, in other words, Connor's actually saved Pochettino's job. Twice. Twice, yeah. And yet, all these melts in the fan base want him sold. Um, but it will come to a point. I think United could be. Uh, listen, they're they're getting they're getting stronger now. They are. They're getting stronger. They are. I mean, that Liverpool result, whether you like it or not, yeah. one of the that'll go up as one of the top five FA Cup games. Yeah, I, I agree. That yeah. is going to push them on. To believe they can get Champions League football to try and win the FA Cup, you know what I'm saying? Like, we haven't had a game like that. When, when was the last time we had a game like that? Champions League, innit? Like, same, yeah. Know, um, Lim's games. I'm trying to think, when was the last time we had a game like that? Before these owners, <laughs> oh, definitely before these owners, bruv. Before these owners, yeah. Yeah, probably champ, champ. Probably the uh, no, not even like not even a game like that. I mean, a game like that was something like four four at home to to um to Ajax and all that. But I mean, the winning the club World Cup, I think, was our last highest point. And since then, you could almost you could say argue, Real Madrid game at Bernabeu. Real, I was going to say that's the yeah, one exception. Out. Yeah, like we got, yeah, we got because yeah. we we because we, we yeah we should have we should have gone through that day. That yeah, was yeah. that was the last time I think we saw, you know, a Chelsea showing up as Chelsea properly. You know, so those levels are in the bin. Yeah, but you're right, Man United have shown that. Man United have shown that, and it's not going to be easy. On top, and this is this is part of why there has to be change because. You see the boost that they've got since this whole Ratcliffe thing has happened. Like the, the the whole fabric has shifted, everything's changed, and it's translated on the pitch. It's translated. Even Ten Ten Hag who's under pressure, who yeah. at one point didn't look like he had a clue or I have a flipping have a flipping um, idea of what he was doing. All of a sudden, you're pulling a result off like that. Yeah, it's it's, it's no surprise when the structure and the organisation and everything behind the scenes is getting fluid and everyone's starting to get on the same page. It translates to the team, and it translates well, to the supporters, and then and they got exactly. the glazers, Eunice, and then they've got it's something to trust in. Exactly, right. they've got something to trust in and believe in and fight yep. for. Yep, and back. Yep, there's nothing that these clowns are demonstrating any of the sort, bro. There's nothing of the sort at Chelsea. No, and behind the scenes, it's a sh it's a shit show. Yeah, do you want to elaborate on that? I mean, I know, but do you want to? It's it's a mess. Like there's there's people within within the club, right? Working within the club that are at their tether. As in the departments that have got nothing to do with what's going on on the pitch, but just as an organization on the pitch, they've never seen it this bad. And it's no surprise. There's people that are doing more than what they have to, their roles are not clear. 
There's no management in place. There's no, things are not organized. Things are not structured. Things are all over the place. If, when, when people are working in that sort of environment or working on that manner, what do you want from that? <laughs> You're not going to get anything. And it's those sort of people that are saying it's it's been at it's, it, this is this is the worst that it's been at. You're looking from when Roman was here, there was no nowhere near, nowhere near to what it is at the moment. So it's no surprise. All of that is what translates to the functioning of the team. Because these players and this team and the manager and all these guys are walking into that same environment. It's a, it's an entire club. Everyone's working together. If things are messed up completely behind the scenes, well, the team's going to be messed up. Simple yeah. as that. The morale is going to be messed up. Did you see Thiago Silva when he signed? I did show it on my stream last stream. Did you see that? I saw that, yeah. yeah. That's bad. Yeah. It's bad. Because yeah. Thiago, you know what he's like in front of the camera when it comes to supporters, Chelsea, uh, you know, he really dejected. He's he feels betrayed. You can tell. He was yeah. doing his coaching badges. He wanted to be a coach. He wanted his kids to stay there. His kids are comfortable at Chelsea. He wants to stay at Chelsea. These lot want him out because he won't sign an NDA because that's not what he's about. He's not from that. That's not how football is for these guys. Yeah. He's he's a generational centre back. I don't people people are mocking him, giving us all these fraudulent stats while we're sitting at the table. All right, it's a joke, it's an insult. Tiago Silva, you ain't gonna see a centre back like that for a fucking long time long at Chelsea, time. right? And not just at Chelsea, in football anywhere. in general. Yeah, anywhere. You know, this guy is different gravy, bruv. You know, honour to have him at our football club and win the Champions League with us. Hundred percent. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Club World Cup, Super Cup. He loves his club. His, his wife loves his club. They're football through and through. That's what they are. Yeah. They're yeah. Brazilian. They're football mad. And these clowns are not. And they know it. So I want people to digest that and understand that. Yep. You know, it's very important. It is. And I, I want to I wanna mention um, Mickey in the chat has got it spot on. The staff are being re- that's key. The what? The, the staff. What normal is? staff. Staff. Normal staff. Yeah. But within the club, are being rinsed, like completely, absolutely used, squeezed out of every single blood, sweat, and tear that they have for what you know, and no one to answer to, or no one to share the load with, or no one to. That's the sort of thing that's going on. You can't work like that. You can't. This is so. They've completely. They've gutted everything out. This this goes back to the whole problem from the very beginning. Gutting the club out in the way that they did was suicide. Suicide. To to flip everyone and shift everyone out and get everyone out and then turn it all on its head to the point where even the groundsman didn't survive. Like everyone got chopped. No transition. The ones that did survive haven't actually had replacements for every single one of those people come in and now the load has got to be shared across everyone that's there without anyone to call to. It's it's a shit show. It's mental. You can't you can't succeed that way. You can't. You can't. It's an absolute. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, because you remember Bell Silver was. They ordered Bell Silver to take a tweet down. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. Right. And she was she was not talking about Pochettino. She said the similar thing about um, Jellyfish Potter. She was talking about the owners and the structure. That's what she's. That's her message. But people don't get it exactly. most people do but that's why they said get it off get it down she left it and because the nda wasn't signed and that was the whole stigma that's why tiago's rotting on the bench and they faked injuries on him as well he's not injured he's 100 percent fit they did this to mason mount last year and then mason mount did get an actual injury and ended up having surgery straight away because he knew he wasn't getting played. With even, Thiago, Frank, goes... even Frank Lampard didn't play him. Do you remember? Real mm-hmm. Madrid game. Do you remember? Yeah. Bernabeu. And he came on and almost scored. And we would have been in that tie. But 
Let's have it right. You've got to take your orders. Yep. And um, Thiago Silva, even to go, his, his situation is deeper because he's been affected at Cobham as well. Yeah. Up until lately. Up until lately. Where he's been training properly with the team again. Big up, Steve G. I see point. that. You, um, yeah, make sure I was going to say do. as well. Yeah. yeah, make sure you do because um, Steve, obviously, everyone in the chat, all the Minnows FC Ultras, all you legends, yeah. Um, Strasbourg Ultras are fully prepared and ready to land it. Um, so let's have it right. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be like we say, we're going to go to war with these clowns. Let's have it right. We warned them. We warned them. We warned them. He didn't want to change it. I told him last, listen, the clowns watch this. Yeah. Let's have it right. These clown lakes, they've got everyone watching every platform, every Twitter account, data and anal uh, analytics. Yeah. All right. We know that when we communicate, we communicate to them. We know what we're doing. Yeah. Just like they do it to everyone else in the fan base. Well, we'll give you, we'll give you a taste of your own medicine. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> These are the facts. Um, big up Brian. He says, yo, Gunny, holler at me. I'm in New York City. Twitter. DM me on Twitter. Man, no football. You'll find me there. Or Instagram, one of the two. You'll find me there. I'll respond. Big up. Love that. Everyone link up. The link up with the minerals is mad. Um, what else, guys? Get these bastards out. <laughs> Simple. Yeah. Get them out of the club, bruv. Roman chance hey. all day long. All day long. Every game. Win, lose, draw. All day long. Yeah. It's got it's got to be the, the stadium's got to be filled with it so we can hear it through our TVs as well, man. So we have to we have to be vocal. It's have to be related. vocal. You know what I would love? I would love that sticker in banner form at Stanford Bridge. I'd love it, but they'd never allow that to happen. At Stamford Bridge, they don't allow banners unless no. it's authorized. Yeah. Um, where you've got the banners, you know, put up in the stadium, you know. And funny enough, they took down the Roman banner, the Roman Empire banner. They did, yeah. yeah. They took that down. But do you know what? On my intro video, I've got and and on my on my backdrop, I've got that on there, and it will stay on there. They can't take it down off here. Um, but yeah, I wonder. Just... There's no chance of getting that, getting those sort of things in. It's like at Arsenal when those banners came out for like Wenger out and all that. They were all over, they were plastered all over. Like they, they must have got it in one way or another. You, you can get it in, Eunice. It's just the moment you put it up, it's gonna be. There's gonna be. Consequences. They're gonna come yeah. to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and they'll name and shame you, whatever. And people can get banned for that. Yeah. And yeah. and it's a, it's a risk. I think you're better off doing it away or at Wembley like I said. Wembley's a good True. Man. Neutral. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Neutral. And Wembley's got a bigger capacity as well. <laughs> you're fucking relentless, bro. I mean the broadcasting there, as you know, you just get one filthy banner up there so everyone can see it. Mate, the Man City Chelsea games on BBC 1, so could, could you could you imagine how they're going to feel if they saw that? Because they'll be at that game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that'd be good. That'd be amazing. Yeah. We no, go. all this all this needs to be relentless. All of it needs to continue, um, and not just on that front. But I think reactions from the CST now that needs to continue. Um, on that front, think communication needs to keep going. Keep plucking answers out of these lot and keep allowing them to dig themselves more into a hole because unless if they actually want to start doing things correctly. But one way or another, you get a reaction out of them, whether positive or negative. If it's positive, great. And if it's negative, well, <laughs> keep going. Do you know what I mean? Um, to, 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 to show the situation for what it actually is. So... Fans continue to do what they got to do. Overall, we continue to do what we got to do. And I hope the CST 
do what they got to do and we just keep eyeing them. That's and, all that can and be done. The CST, don't be weak. Yeah. Don't let these clowns fob you off with lies. Yeah. When they sit in front of you and talk like politicians, because that's what they are. They're good at that. They're great at PR. They've proven that already. They've proven so, that. They, them. they can them. sell sand to an Arab. Yeah. Serve it right. So make sure that you stick to your guns for all the church supporters. Because listen, we're done. We're f- uh, uh, like I want them out at all costs. I yeah. want these clowns out because I know the arrogance, the ego that they got. They ain't going to change it, and they can't at this moment in time. And we ain't got time to stick around waiting for more trust the process we're we're supposed to trust the process failing to then trust you to fix it are you winding me up <laughs> how does that work yeah. yeah we've been plated already i ain't asked to be plated again so have it right well not me personally you know a lot of the people out there they've been plated they've been served up this pi happy meal um yeah. no nah, not for me bro uh, big up, uh, Brian says, Clown Lakes have no idea what they started. Uh, big up, Adam rated. He says, next game against Burnley, and it could not be an easier, it could any not easier. be any easier than this. It's a must win, no excuses. But we're going into every game this season saying they're must wins. <laughs> and we're not even sure we're going to win them. It doesn't matter who we're facing. Yeah, we just about win them, some, some of them. But it's it's no, it's a point though, because Burnley are so far gone. <laughs> like Burnley are along with Sheffield United, you can't it, you can't get any easier than that at home as well. You just can't. So yeah, I, I reckon we'll win. If if we don't <laughs> like there's levels. If if we don't, like I knew we were crap, but Burnley won their last game. Burnley won their last game. Against who? Um, is it Bournemouth? No, um, no, um, uh, Brighton? No, it wasn't. Bright. Was it Brighton? No, Brighton beat them, I think, didn't they? No, they lost 3 0 to Palace. They got a red card. Oh, no, hang on. Sorry, no, no, they beat Brentford 2 1. That's it, Brentford, yeah. Brentford went out to 10. They, they won't have Dacho Fofana against us because he's, he's our player. Oh, yeah, That's bring Dacho Fafana. He's the next Drogba as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair to him, but this is a point I want to make. Yeah. These players can perform like that, yeah. no pressure, with a club, with no expectations, but just to showcase your talent. Yep. That's what they're trying to do at Chelsea. But you can't do that with his supporters. You can't do it with his club. The club's already built, established, elite. Biggest in London. Pedigree. Yeah. Goes back to you don't understand what you're running. You don't understand the culture, the heritage. You don't know nothing. That's why the disconnect's there with the supporters as well. Because they don't care about supporters. We're customers, aren't we? Aren't we? That's it, yeah. Customers. Exactly. <sighs> Fucking joke, man. But listen. Respect to everyone in here. Smash that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Let's get us to 10k. Get Gunny. What Gunny? What are you after? What are you? I'm after? after 18k. I'm less than 100 away. He's less than 100 away from 18. And Eunice, are you close to 200 yet, or what? <laughs> no, uh, 176. I've crossed. He's so close. We're, we're on close. the road. We're on the road. Yeah, yeah on the road to 200k, bro. Let's get Eunice to 200k, man. Come on. Um, and um, yeah, big up to everyone in here. Respect. This is an epic stream. Uh, this is a historical stream. Let's have it right. Um, and um, we will continue to land it. Let's see what unfolds, guys. Um, as always, keep pushing it out on all your platforms um, and make sure that we, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, big up to the panel. Big up. Johnny, he said, uh, Adam says, we've more than a billion spent on the squad. Yes, every game should have been a win. I mean, it's a bit naive to say that, like every game's win because we spent a billion. But when you look at in terms of the quality that we spent the billion, not really. 
Like our no. team isn't actually on that level whatsoever. But I get like I think what you're saying, which makes sense. If we'd spent a billion correctly on, look, if we got five absolute world beaters in the team with a billion, we should be like top. We should be top. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, um, so taking that into context, yeah, I, probably, I get what you, I get what you mean. But yeah. we spent it wrong, so that's not the case. Because of the wage structure and all this waffle, you know. Imagine we could have bought a De Jong, a Declan Rice. Yeah, yeah, right? easily. In yep. midfield, easily with this yep. money. You yep. could have gone and got an Aussie man, right? Yep. Whatever. Um, who else could you go and get? You could have got a, a, a Bastoni's or Bastoni, a Dele- I don't know. I need Bastoni. that. Yeah, need Bastoni's in my opinion. Barrea, um, yeah, yeah. You could, yeah, and you built yeah. you're building a spine there already. The spine's there. You can even get Alfonso Davis with that money as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, and, and you could have kept the players, some of the players we had, you know, exactly, exactly. So you don't have to buy so many players every in every position. Now they're talking about spending buying two players in every position of the age of 2021 20, of world class level. Well, how many fucking world class? Under 20 year olds or 20 year olds are there out exactly. there anyway. Exactly. How can you call them world class at that age? Exactly. <laughs> this is so they have no idea. It, they, it's right. a paradox. It's a paradox. It doesn't yeah. make sense. It's Get a contradiction. Get him out. Mate. Unless, Get him out. unless, unless you're going for Mbappe, Bellingham, Vinicius Jr. You can have been got too many. Right? You're going, to Real Madrid yeah, you're going for these guys at that age. That's world class at that age. Are you not going for those guys? Well, they're not world class then. Exactly. exactly. So it's it's like you say, it's just it's just lies. PR lies. That's why we want them out. Or get them out. Yeah. Because why? We see things they'll never see. Let's have it right. Shout out Chelsea old boys. Go. Uh, big up to everyone. Respect to everyone. We're going to end the stream now. Make sure you put all your comments down below. It's very important you put all your comments down below. Go and put your comments in in, uh, Eunice's and Gunny's streams as well. Um, And and respect to everyone, man. Respect to everyone supporting the channel, supporting the true narrative, supporting the the trust, the protest, to have it right. Um, And we want to make our Chelsea great again and bring it back to where it belongs, bro. To have it right. Shout out, Brian. One more time. Clown Lake out, up the fucking shelves, up the fucking minerals, long live Chelsea old boys. And we are going to end on the GOAT himself. Respect to everyone um, supporting, as always. And, um, yeah, we're leaving on this one. You know Clown what I'm Lake out. Clown Lake out. Clown Lake out. Clown Lake out. But first, always, and last. Let's go.